Outside the classroom the other day, a little boy came up to me and tugging at the hem of my garment asked, how do I be a success like you? And I didn't know what to say. You see, I've never thought of myself that way because after GCSEs, A-levels and two degrees, society does not tend to see reading poetry to kids as a natural progression. And sometimes it feels like I'm not listening in the lesson, like this isn't proper work or the kind of thing a man should be doing. My parents tell me that I'm better than that, that this isn't a proper job, that of course giving kids the joy of words is no bad thing, but to leave it to someone else and to go out there and be someone. Wear a suit, son. Commute, son. And of course, we read poems and books to you, son, but this was not an end in itself. At no point did we dream that one day you would be doing such a thing for anyone other than your own kids. What are you? A glorified bloody babysitter. And so the bitter taste at the back of my throat when the boy asked, how do I be a success like you, arose from not believing it to be true. It arose from skulking in the shadows of people my age on 80k a year. Of people my age with their own flats and cars and even of the bloke at the bar who, upon being told that I work with children, drunkenly snorts perverts. As though that could be the only excuse for a man wanting to do such a thing. It arose from having memorised the lines of a play in which I play no part, but no. Through that boy's eyes, I saw myself anew. So to the boy who asked me, how do I be a success like you? I say this. Believe that what you're doing is worthwhile. Believe that anyone who doubts you is mistaken. Tell yourself every day that you can be whatever you want to be. Tell yourself that success is not just reading from someone else's script, but believing what you say, or even better, writing the words yourself. And know that what counts is not whether you've spelt them correctly or whether they're in the right order, but that they are yours. Success does not come in manuals. Success is not flat pack furniture. And you know what? Success certainly doesn't come from listening to poems about what success is. So, son, do it your way. Don't listen to what I say. I wish window wipers were invented for spectacles. Now that would be the ultimate dream. I am tired of wiping my lenses every time when they fill up with so much steam. It mainly happens during the bleak winter period when I come into contact with blistery ice. The Arctic temperature has a habit of intruding my view and I no longer see through my eyes. My penultimate predicament is when I catch a glimpse of an irritable, turbid smudge. Yet I am tired of wiping my lenses in order to get the obtrusion to budge. Handkerchiefs are the only tool to rectify the hitch. Now that is a deliquent taboo. Piddling about all day and wiping your specs in order to achieve a better view. I have considered of upgrading my pitiable sight. I have pondered about getting contacts. At least I will be free from obstacles in my vision and my perception will be perfectly intact. I wish window wipers were invented for spectacles. It is a conception that is unforeseen. I am tired of wiping my lenses every time when they fill up with so much steam.
Alpha was the one, though I did not have the bravado of Charlie, who was the first I ever kissed in a cubicle where we could hear the pissing of the girl next door. We would drive to the river's delta and hear the children's playground echo, they that life had yet to helter skelter, and how we learned to know the ways in which a fox could trot in the back of that battered golf, GTI. One time, in foolish anticipation of what we could be, we drove to the sea and booked a hotel that had curtains that were India blue, booked a room with a sea view and a balcony that was four from above to below, and there, outside, he stood and shouted, Juliet! And we never even spent the night. Instead, we laughed at the fishermen with their old wives' tails and bought a kilo of their catch, which we cracked into one another's mouths and planned to steal a boat and sail to Lima. Then I met Mike. It was November, and the fog made orange circle swirls as it breathed the morning's newness. He had an Oscar-winning film star grin and hummed the words to Papa was a rolling stone. His pool cue beckons through the smoke that snaked him, though I nearly missed it. It was not Romeo, you understand. It was quick and careless in the passenger seat of his dad's Sierra. I watched the mountains bob in and out of view and thought of how my grandmother was tangled by a man in uniform before ending here. Then there was my Victor. He was whiskey, drinking, whining, dining, hard loving, fast talking, motorbike riding with the lamppost colliding, running and running with his broken head. And at the hospital, somebody read his x-ray wrong. He was gone. There was a funeral, flowers, six black horses and all hell's angels saluted. Some schoolboy pact was kept and Yankee Doodle sung. The service was strange, and his parents traveled from Africa with a language I knew not of. Zulu, said an angel, <laughs> with the letter air upon his back and hair all long. And that's how I came to know that Alpha was the one. Thank you.